Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. New clerk of the Houses of Parliament appointed. Sections of Kingston 5 remain tense following fatal gun attack this morning. And later in sports, West Indies coach close to finalizing T20 World Cup squad. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kerry and Simpson. Here are the details. Colleen Lowe has been appointed as the new clerk of the Houses of Parliament. Her appointment takes effect today. She previously served as a deputy clerk. She replaces former clerk Valerie Curtis, who retired on April 6. Mrs. Curtis's tenure ended in controversial circumstances after she was reprimanded by the Speaker of the House, Juliet Holness. Mrs. Holness accused her of gross dereliction of duty in relation to the handling of reports submitted to the rather submitted by the Auditor General's Department. The opposition and unions have criticized the Speaker for the rebuke. Sections of Trenchtown in St. Andrew remain tense after a man was shot and killed in the Havana community early this morning. The police have identified the deceased as B. Rain Powell of a Havana address. They say about five this morning, about seven men barged into Mr. Powell's house and shot him several times. Another man who was also inside the house was grazed by bullets. Several spent shells were found on the ground outside Mr. Powell's gate. Now the police theorized that the men in the area fired back at the gunmen who killed Mr. Powell. The police are also trying to establish if Mr. Powell's death is a reprisal for the killing of another popular man a week ago, just meters away from Mr. Powell's residence. The Manchester police have seized another firearm, the second in less than 24 hours following a robbery in the parish Sunday evening. The police have also taken three men into custody in relation to the incident. Reports are that four men, two of whom were armed with guns, robbed patrons of cell phones and cash at a shop in Finegrass, Manchester, around 9 o'clock. Thousands of dollars in liquor and poker boxes were also stolen. The police say they were alerted to the robbery and quickly launched an operation, during which a Toyota Voxy with three of the men aboard on board was intercepted. A 9mm pistol was found in the vehicle. The operation saw rather later saw the cops searching an abandoned building in Christiana community where they recovered some of the stolen items. To a TVJ News follow-up now, more reactions from stakeholders to the deadly gun attack on Negril's most popular beach last week. Now, in spite of the violence, one member of the tourism ministry's leadership is insisting that the tourism mecca is safe for visitors. Details in this report from Dwayne Anderson. Crime at the doorstep of Jamaica's tourism product. Thursday's daylight murder of a man and the wounding of another took place a few feet from where tourists and other vacation seekers bathed. Delano Seavright is senior strategist in the Ministry of Tourism. We've been in touch with the police on the matter. Um, it is terribly unfortunate and should not have happened and I believe the police are on top of the situation they appear to be to have the appropriate leads in, in, in finding uh, in finding the culprit or culprits behind it and we expect um, some movement on that very soon. One hotelier agreed with the need for police to nab the perpetrator to help reassure persons but he also believes more manpower is needed in the western tourism mecca. These things are not good for tourism um, and, and we need to, to try to prevent these things from happening as much as we can. And, you know, I, I would like to again make the call for Negril to, to be provided with more police officers so that we can have more boots on the ground, we can have more presence of police around and, and I believe that will deter these kind of things from happening. If there were police patrols on the beach when those guys arrived, I'm sure they would not have committed that crime. The tourism minister official in the meantime stressed that Jamaica as a destination is not at risk. The crime rate against visitors is about 0.01%. It's extremely low, extremely rare, 
Uh, this incident, of course, seems to be an interpersonal situation involving two uh, Jamaicans who may reside in the area. Um, we have millions of visitors who come to this country on a yearly basis. Last year, four million. The year before that, under four million. And the years before that, four million. So we have millions of people who have come in and out of Jamaica and have had a wonderful vacation in any country in the world, whether in New York, in, in the United States, or Mexico, or Dominican Republic, you will have an incident that is disturbing. And we had one, certainly, today. Um, but nonetheless, our product is safe. Dwayne Anderson, TVJ News. To another TVJ News follow-up, sections of the main road linking Rimesbury to Yorktown in southwestern Clarendon are being repaired. The road patching work was observed almost a day after a TVJ News report highlighted the poor state of the road. Carnival lovers complained about the roadway after they participated in the first ever carnival road march in the area. The organizers of the event express anticipation for the swift response, citing the need for better infrastructure if the entertainment events, rather if entertainment events and other economic activities are to thrive. They have also received a commitment from the political representatives that additional works are planned to improve other roads in the future. Get certified. That advice to Jamaicans looking to access seasonal work in the U.S., Canada, as well as Jamaica for jobs. The Labor and Security Minister, Colonel Charles Jr., says the government is increasing its sensitization programs to make more Jamaicans aware of Many the training times opportunities. Of labor and social security, I get the calls and the questions. I want a job, Minister. I want to go away. What do I need to do? And I can tell you, there are many opportunities for Jamaicans in Jamaica and overseas that you cannot take up unless you position yourself with the right certification and experience to be able to tap into those opportunities. That's the reality. Over the next few months, the ministry says it will also be placing interested persons in organizations so they can gain the experience often required by employers. Mr. Charles Jr. was speaking to stakeholders in Clarendon recently. We are going to connect you to hotels like Versailles and other places where you can get even a two or four week experience. Because guess what? If you're doing hospitality, how many weeks you need to know how to spread the bed? Once you get the certificate, not a lot. Ah, so I'm saying to you, what we're doing is creating now practical opportunities for you to be able to do that. And we did it in Manchester successfully with about 21 ladies and all all of them are going to be leaving because all of them have not just a certificate but the experience and if you have the certificate and no experience you're not gonna go anywhere if you have experience and no certificate you're not gonna go anywhere so you need both of them it's time for a break stay with us more local stories when we return welcome back to the midday news Jamaica will not get a full blackout during the highly anticipated Great North American Solar Eclipse taking place today, April 8. The island will, however, see a partial eclipse. The, phen the phenomenon will last for two hours, four minutes. The partial starting will be at 12.51 p.m. with the ending at 2.55 p.m. The total eclipse areas will be in parts of Mexico, Canada and the United States. Persons are advised not to stare at the sun but to observe safely using special glasses or observe streams online. It's time for the Business Minute. There was a reduction in Jamaica's trade deficit for January to November 2023 compared to the similar period in the previous year. The Statistical Institute of Jamaica Statin says the difference between what was spent on imports and the sum earned from exports was 5.12 billion US dollars. For the 11 month period in 2022, the trade deficit was 5.43 billion US dollars. Last year, Jamaica spent 6.98 billion US dollars for goods coming into the country. That's lower than the 7.1 
$1 billion U.S. dollars spend in 2022. Jamaica's export earnings increased, however, reaching $1.86 billion U.S. dollars. For January to November 2022, total exports were valued at $1.66 billion U.S. dollars. Further afield, Facebook parent company Meta is accused of censoring a non-profit newspaper for publishing a critical report about the company. The controversy began Thursday when users noticed that all links to the publication, the Kansas Reflector, had been flagged as a cybersecurity threat and their posts were removed. Meta apologized and called it an error, saying what happened had nothing to do with the publication's criticism. The paper said all except one link had been restored hours later. But on Friday, users who attempted to share the critical column on Facebook, Instagram, or threads were shown a warning that it violated community guidelines. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Machine Masters. Time now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, the Royal Bahamas Defense Force on Sunday apprehended 257 Haitian migrants traveling by boat off the islands of Inagua, the southernmost district of the Bahamas. The passengers on the boat included 218 men and 39 women. The authorities say they destroyed the boat by setting it on fire and transported the migrants to Inagua for processing by immigration authorities. The interception is part of an operation announced in early March to deter illegal immigration and securing the nation's territorial waters. On the international scene, Nicaragua on Monday opened arguments at the International Court of Justice ICJ in a case accusing Germany of facilitating genocide in Gaza. Germany is accused of breaching the UN Genocide Convention by sending military hardware to Israel and seizing funding of the UN's aid agency. Nicaragua has asked the UN's highest court to halt German weapons sales to Israel. Berlin rejects the claims and will present a defense to the ICJ on Tuesday. And several Mexican diplomats have returned home from Ecuador after the two countries broke its diplomatic ties. This follows an incident last Friday in which Ecuadorian police forcefully entered the Mexican embassy in Quito to arrest the former Ecuadorian vice president. The diplomatic role led to widespread protests over the weekend outside the Ecuadorian embassy in Mexico City. Mexico's foreign minister says her country will report the raid to the ICJ. And those are the top regional and international stories. I'm Amoy Harriet. Thanks, Amoy. We head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports with Jordan Ford. <laughs> 